What's up you guys, Rex here. Let's talk about what I think is without a doubt the coolest species of bacteria I've learned about in medical school, Heliobacter pylori. H. pylori is really cool both clinically and biologically. So starting off, H. pylori infects like 50% of the world's population. So it's a big deal. And the good news is for 85% of people infected, they will develop some gastritis, technically that you would be able to see under a microscope, but there's not real clinical significance. But for 15% of people, they might go on to develop a peptic ulcer. And then for around 1%, they can develop gastric cancer as a result of the H. pylori infection. And this was a really big deal figuring out in medicine that both peptic ulcers and gastric cancer can be traced back to a bacterial infection. And in fact, the 2005 Nobel Prize was given out for the work that established that peptic ulcers were actually caused by bacteria. To help put this in perspective, gastric cancer is the fifth most common type of cancer in the world, and 70% of those cancers can be traced back to H. pylori infection. The risk of getting gastric cancer from an H. pylori infection is similar to the risk of getting lung cancer from smoking, so clearly a big deal. But now biologically is where H. pylori gets really cool and interesting. So H. pylori has been evolving with humans and the reason why it has sort of co-evolved with us is that we think it actually starts off having a beneficial effect to humans before it goes on to potentially cause peptic ulcers and cancers in a subset of the population. And some of those early benefits include actual protection from other types of cancer, such as esophageal carcinoma, as well as decreased rates of childhood asthma for people infected with H. pylori, and protection against other types of chronic infections, such as tuberculosis. And the way in which H. pylori evolved to actually survive in our stomach is a very interesting strategy. Now, you probably know that the stomach is very acidic. That's like the thing to know about the stomach. And a big part of the reason it is so acidic is that it is able to kill basically all of the bacteria that we end up consuming. Incidentally, they all die in our stomach because it is very difficult for things to survive in a pH of like one to three. Now, H. pylori, I would have guessed would take the strategy of learning to survive in a very acidic environment. That's not true. H. pylori has a flagella and they very actively swim away from acid. And so they actually learn to survive by, rather than conforming to the environment, modifying the environment themselves. And so the first thing they do is once they get into our stomach is they flee acid and they reside just in the thinnest little mucus layer around the surface of our stomach that actually protects our stomach from digesting itself. So they go straight to that layer. They don't actually go inside the lumen, the actual opening cavity of our stomach. And once they are there, one of the main things they are doing is cranking out urease protein, which is the main protein they produce, which actually breaks down urea in our stomach into products that act as a buffer that neutralize the acid. And that becomes super cool clinically that we can actually detect H. pylori infection based on a urea breath test because that's impacted by this urease protein that the bacteria are making inside of our stomachs. And what the bacteria do next is they actually mostly latch on to the junctions between cells in our epithelium of our stomach, which is the layer covering the inside of our stomach. That's the epithelium. And they get food by stealing nutrients from the cells in this epithelial layer. And when they do this, this starts to trigger a chronic gastritis. And so whenever you hear itis, you should think inflammation. But this inflammation is meant to actually get rid of all of the bacteria. But H. pylori have evolved such that they are actually very good at evading the immune system. They do this partially through modifying their lipopolysaccharides on their surface, which our immune system normally can recognize its bacterial lipopolysaccharide. But H. pylori has theirs modified with some like sugars and stuff on the outside to make it look like blood antigens such that our immune system can't recognize it. They also have a special coating on their flagella that makes it impossible for our immune system to recognize it and fully kill the bacteria. And some strains of H. pylori go a step further that they have genes encoding for molecules that form basically micro syringes that inject other molecules into our cells that hijack the cells and basically turn on growth factors and also mess with the polarity of the cells, which makes sure that the cell knows which way is into the stomach, which way is 
the rest of our body, that we need that organization. But when that all gets messed up, it actually makes it easier for the cell to steal nutrients. And this perfect storm of chronic inflammation plus cells being given growth factors, plus cells not knowing which way is up and down, that's a perfect storm for leading to cancer potentially. And that is part of the reason why gastric cancer can be caused by some strains of H. pylori. And the last cool thing H. pylori does is that while the majority of the actual bacteria know that they are gonna survive and thrive best in that mucus layer right attached to that epithelium, the problem with doing that long-term is that our epithelium is constantly getting sloughed off into our stomach and new cells are dividing and repopulating that epithelium. So some of the bacteria burrow down farther into the epithelial layer and actually infect the stem cells of the epithelium, which is the actual cell that is indefinitely dividing to create the actual epithelium. So some stay there to make sure that the bacteria can survive long-term while the majority are in that surface layer. And the good news for us though, is that while all of this really cool evolution has happened in H. pylori to make it really impressive at invading our stomach and surviving and thriving in a really harsh acidic environment, they are no match for good old antibiotics. So we can treat and cure a H. pylori infection, which is great news for peptic ulcers, which back before we knew this was caused by bacteria, we didn't know how to treat. Now we can treat peptic ulcers with antibiotics. And even more exciting is that we can prevent a type of cancer just by detecting H. pylori infections in high-risk individuals and then treating them with antibiotics and essentially greatly diminish their risk of ever developing gastric cancer, which is a huge win for medicine and a huge L for the bacteria, but the bacteria H. pylori is still super cool and what I think is the coolest bacteria I've learned about in my first year of medical school. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, leave them down below. I'll read and respond to every single comment. If you want to catch more videos where I share cool things that I've learned about in a week of medical school, make sure you subscribe to the notification bell. Also, consider checking out the playlist on the right for more videos like this. If you like the video, like the video, dislike the video if you dislike the video. And until next time, don't be ordinary, go be great. Mm -hmm.